All right, let's face it, it's a hot summer already and sweat just happens. Certain deodorants certainly work better than others. Here to help us out is Dr. John Griffin with Kelsey Seabull Clinic. Hello there. This is a big hey, problem for a lot of people right now. How common though is excessive sweating? That's a great question. It's way more common than you'd think. Probably three to 5% of the population deals with what we'd call excess sweating. So, so much that you either have to change your clothes or it's interfering with your lifestyle or your work. Uh, and that's no fun at all. Maybe finding the right deodorant could make a difference. Do you have suggestions on finding the right one that might really make a difference in what you're dealing with? Yes, mostly great question, I sure do. So the first step is understanding the difference between deodorant and antiperspirant. So the deodorant just helps with the smell the antiperspirant actually slows down the sweating. So you wanna make sure that your product has both. And there are some just antiperspirants out there. And those are available over the counter and there are some prescription versions as well. Okay, and if you just go online for a moment, you can see all kinds of recipes for homemade deodorant. Mm -hmm. Would any of those <laughs> actually help? Or are you kind of pushing the bar there and don't, don't even think yeah. about it? You know, the homemade deodorants, mostly will absorb sweat. They may cut down on some of the odor, but they're not really going to slow down the sweating. So it is the, uh, the products that are really targeted to the antiperspirant category. And those are mostly like an aluminum-based product. So I would say the, the home remedies probably aren't going to cut it as far as cutting down down the amount of sweat. All right, good to know. And I had a feeling you were going to say that, but it's always <laughs> worth asking. All right, now yes. let's talk about for someone who's just really upset and they say, look, I've tried every any perspirant, I've tried every deodorant, nothing's working yeah. because it can really be embarrassing sometimes if you have excessive sure. sweating, especially, you know, your shirt gets wet or something. Is there anything medically that you can do to help somebody mm -hmm. who's having those severe problems? Yeah. Great question. And the first thing I would say is you're not alone. You know, if that's if you're thinking that's me, but I don't want to talk to anybody, you're not alone. Um, we, I told you it's about 5% of the population that deals with it, mm -hmm. but only about 1% of the people that um, in the population actually see a doctor about it. So it's, it's way more common and it's okay to go see your doctor about it. And yes, there are definitely things we can do. There are uh, prescription topical products. There's, uh, procedures that can be done in the office with relatively little discomfort and there's even surgical or device solutions that can be really effective even in a semi-permanent or permanent manner. Now a lot of people think of Botox as something that would make them look younger <laughs> so how in the world do you bring uh -huh. that into play with helping somebody yeah. with sweating problems? Great, great question. So Botox we actually use very frequently. This is something that is probably one of the most satisfying procedures for a patient to go through, uh, not because it makes you look younger, but because it can stop the sweating for three months, months at a time. And it works on just about anybody that tries it. So it has to be done in, in the office, but generally speaking, insurance covers it and it is very effective. So it's one of my favorite things to, to do. I'm really glad you brought that up because people might think there's no way insurance would cover something like that. So that's huge. Mm -hmm. And you said the magical number three <laughs> months, our hottest months yeah. <laughs> during the summertime. So that would be that's timely right. for, for how long it lasts. <laughs> now we've been talking about armpits. Let's talk about something else because people have sweating issues everywhere. I mean, sometimes you can shake somebody's right. hand and it'll be dripping. Are there other body parts mm -hmm. that you can help them out as well as far as some of those different mm -hmm. types of procedures and things that you mentioned? Yeah. Absolutely. So hands and feet are the other two really common areas. Uh, you can use Botox there, but the injections are more uncomfortable. So generally speaking, we'll try uh, either a topical or an oral therapy. There are some oral medicines, just a pill you take once a day that can really slow down the sweating and they can make a dramatic difference in somebody's life because that you know, I guess with COVID going on, we're doing more elbow bumps than we are handshakes, mm -hmm. but it can really uh, interfere with your life when, when you can't even hold a pencil, for example. And, and um, So lots of options. You know, I want to ask you about the side effects of something like that, because when I picture you taking a pill that would make mm -hmm. you stop sweating, I don't know why I immediately felt uh -huh. thirsty. I felt like it was going to dehydrate <laughs> me. The, are there any side effects yeah. like that or, or it actually just handles yeah. the sweat? <clears throat> so, you know, you, you are very uh, intuitive because it just slows down everything, meaning 
you do get some dry mouth with it. Um, you can get a little bit of dry eyes, but it's always a balance. Mm-hmm. You know, we find the the dose that cuts down on the sweating enough, but doesn't. But the side effects don't interfere with your life. All right, so, Dr. Uh, it's always a balance. Yep. Thanks. No sweat. <laughs> no sweat at all. Great conversation to help. Hopefully, a whole lot of people this morning, Dr. Griffin. Thank you for your time from Kelsey Siebel. My pleasure. All right.